back during the cold storm in February here in Texas, um, right after it, Cade called me on the phone and said, Greg, there's a little, little itty bitty chihuahua that has been found on the streets near our house. And we need to keep it so that the owner will, when they come looking for it, it'll be okay. I said, oh, okay. Now, you have to understand, I've got Fanny, Chase, and Calvin. So I already have three dogs, and we have a cat named um, Tabitha, okay? So we already have a menagerie. We don't need any more dogs. But, you know, as a temporary measure to keep this little puppy safe, I, I didn't have a problem with that. And uh, so he goes and gets the dog, brings it home, and I remember going in. And the instant I looked at this little white, scruffy-looking uh, hair all over the place, little chihuahua, I thought to myself, oh, no. I took the little puppy into my arms and sat down on the couch and it burrowed its little face right into my armpit and I was gone. I, we didn't adopt that dog, she adopted us. Mine, she said. What an adorable little puppy Chloe became. We call her Chloe, but before we even knew what to name her, we called her Miss Munchkin. Because that's who she is to us, Miss Munchkin, Miss Munchkin. Everybody loves Miss Munchkin. We'll sing that to her. Anyway, I was cuddling with her and only had her a couple of days. And I went into the hallway bathroom and I didn't want to let her down because every time I let her down, she'd cry. There's nothing worse than her squeaking. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing worse than her squeaking. So I didn't put her down. I carried her everywhere. And so I carried her into the hallway bathroom uh, to get some Tylenol because I had a headache. And I opened the door and I walk in. And this little dog sees herself in the mirror. And she goes from being a little angel to being a little monster and tries literally to leap out of my arms at the little dog she saw in her reflection in the mirror. And she was all teeth and growls at that little reflection in the mirror. I remember the first time I saw myself on camera. Um, do y'all remember Bozo the Clown? Uh, Bozo was in Dallas over on uh, Forest at Royal Lane, and they had a great big event there, and Channel 8 cameras were there. And, I, and I, Mom and Dad took us over because I wanted to meet Bozo. I wanted to meet Bozo the Clown so badly. So, so Mom and Dad took us over there, and... Um, <laughs> We, we went up to Bozo, and I remember looking up at Bozo and Bozo looking down at me, and I was so scared and I was so frightened. Well, later that day, we got home, and sure enough, there was the footage on Channel 8, and I remember seeing myself. I didn't know it was me. It didn't look like me. I, it wasn't what I'd seen in the mirror. I couldn't believe that's me. That's not me. I didn't believe it. Recognize Bozo, recognize mom and dad. I didn't recognize me. I used to seeing me in the mirror. That doesn't look like me at all. Reflections are weird things. Reflections are very strange. They, they reflect what we look like, but mostly they reflect us backwards. And we kind of get used to that, don't we? Today in our reading from the book of Hebrews, we have a very fascinating reading about the nature of Jesus. We have a fascinating reading about the nature of God in Jesus Christ that I want us to take a moment to look at today. And as we look at this, I want you to think about how the bread and the cup and the sacrament of Holy Communion are an imprint or a reflection of Jesus for us. Listen to what it says. Jesus is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's 
very being. Well, that's really big stuff, friends. That's very powerful stuff to hear. Reflection, however, reflection is a squirrely translation of the Greek original here. The word used literally means radiance or brightness. So Jesus is the radiance or brightness of God's glory. And that's also an interesting double usage for glory is the Greek word doxa. We get the word doxology from it. And it means shining, bright, and radiant. The word translated reflection also has a nuanced meaning. It's brightness or radiance that's not its own. Hmm. but reflects or conveys or relates or contains another's brightness or another's radiance. Interesting enough, in ancient usage, they used to say that the moon, when it talked about the moon's brightness, it used this word. The Greeks conceived of the idea that the moon wasn't shining with just its own light, that it was reflecting the sun's light. That's, that's fascinating. We normally think <coughs> of Jesus as being radiant in glory. The transfiguration on the mountaintop is a good example of this. In that story, Jesus' body was fluorescing with light, shining like through a stained glass window. If you come in here in the afternoon and uh, in the morning and you look at this stained glass window in the back here, the sunlight shining through this stained glass window is just amazing and it just sh- projects light through all this part of the sanctuary. In the morning, it's incredible to see. Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration was fluorescing with God's light shining through him and the disciples could see it. It wasn't a reflection, it was coming from him as the source. Hmm. So it's two related but different conceptions of Jesus. Here in Hebrews, Jesus is reflecting God's doxa, God's glory for us to see. The second half of the passage merits further consideration too. Jesus is the exact imprint of God's very being. The word imprint is a lot of fun. In Greek, it's character. Huh? Yeah, character. We get the English word character from it. (laughs) In iconography and linguistics, a character is a well-defined symbol that represents something else a sound, a concept, or an idea. On your smartphone or some other iconographic display, there's usually a small shape that has the artistic characteristics that look kind of like an envelope. And we know that that means email. And when we tap it, we access our email. That's the idea here. That little icon stands for email. And when we see it, we know that we'll get email when we touch it. Likewise, Jesus is the characteristic, the character, the elsewhere in the Scripture it actually calls Jesus the icon or the image of the invisible God. Likewise, this is telling us that Jesus is like the reflecting character of God. When we access that reflecting character, we access God. Uh, I, I don't want to leave this idea. I want to. I want to stay here for just a moment. Jesus is the character, the exact character of God. It, another English translation here is imprint. Imprint. The imprint of God. That, that's so. That is so fascinating, the imprint. When, when they're talking about here is like a seal. When you would seal something up in the ancient world, you'd take some wax uh, and you'd melt it and you'd put it on the, on the 
margin that you're sealing together. And then you would take a ring or an imprint staff and you would press it into that hot wax and it would create that seal, that impression, that imprint. And it stood for, it symbolized, it proclaimed, this authority seals this. It's like a signature. This authority seals this. It comes from this authority. In the ancient world, that was very important. The emperor or the pope or some other authority would seal his authority onto this document, seal it closed, or sign it with that imprint. And by that you would know that it came from that important personage, that emperor, or that pope. And this is the metaphor being used here. For Jesus. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint, the exact character of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. What a powerful, what a, what a puzzling and yet fulfilling image of Jesus. We, we talk about Jesus in many different ways. We talk about Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one of God. We talk about Jesus as the Son of God. We talk about Jesus as the Word of God. We talk about Jesus as the presence of God. How about this reflection and imprint of God, character of God. How can we, how can we, how can we be an exact imprint of Christ? If Jesus Christ is the exact imprint, character of God, and we are called to be part of the body of Christ, then how can we become an exact imprint, character of Christ? We, as the body of Christ, have that calling in our identity. We are called to be the exact imprint, character, reflection of the love of God in Jesus Christ for others. That is how we are called to live. That is how we are called to proceed through life. That is who we are called to be. How do we do this? What is our strength for this? What is our nourishment for us? What is our source of being? That imprint. Where does God come into our lives to make that imprint into us real? When I was in the doctoral program... My focus was on the real presence of Jesus in the sacrament of Holy Communion. And one of the things that I struggled with was this idea that Jesus is really present and really present in the sacrament and really present for us in the sacrament and really present in us when we receive the sacrament. And I believe that it is here, among many other places, but here for sure, That God makes that exact imprint of Christ part of us when we eat and when we drink with faith. We become the character, the imprint of Christ for a broken and hurting world. St. Teresa of Avila has a beautiful prayer. Christ has no other body now on earth but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which He looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet through which He walks to do good. You are His hands, you are His feet, you are His eyes, you are His body. 
Christ has no body now on earth, but yours. How does that come to be? I believe one place that comes to be true is in the sacrament. When we eat and drink with faith, our eyes focused on Christ. Christ conveys Christ's very life to us and through us for others. And just as Jesus becomes the exact imprint of God in this broken and hurting world, and when we look at Christ, we are looking at God and we are seeing God's love and God's compassion for us through Christ, so also when people look and experience us, they're looking through us to experience and receive the love of God that Jesus brings for us all. Just as that stained glass window there in the early morning hours shines forth light in all of its amazing hues through those windows into this room, upon this area, so also God's love shines through us in all our many amazing hues to shine God's love to all. God's love becomes present to us and in us through the reading of Scripture, through the prayer life, through our hymn life, through singing, through serving, through giving, through fellowshipping together, through all the many means of grace. And amazingly, through the sacrament of Holy Communion, we are fed now, I can remember in the movie Agnes of God, Agnes wasn't eating all her lima beans, and she had confessed that. And the mother superior said, oh, you need to eat, Agnes. She says, I, I don't want to eat. The host, the sacrament, the, the bread, the host is enough. And, and the mother superior says, uh, Agnes, the host doesn't contain the daily recommended allowance of anything. And, and Agnes goes, but it does of God. It is a metaphorical meal. There's not much there physically. But by faith and by the power of the Holy Spirit, by God's presence in Christ Jesus, that little bread and that little cup conveys to us the enormous life-transforming majesty and presence and imprint of God. As you come and receive from the table of the Lord today, I want to encourage you to be open to that imprint of God in your life. I want you to be open to what Christ is calling you to do in your life. I want you to be open and attuned to the presence of Jesus, and as you bring your prayers and receive the cup and receive the bread, I want you to be open to the imprint of Jesus' love in and to and for you. Come to the table of the Lord and allow that imprint, that character of God that was in Jesus Christ to change you, to transform you, to fill you, to make you whole, to make you truly a reflection of the love of God for all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may God's people say, Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. 
When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come and he would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, you promised to be with us always in the power of your Word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave the cup to his disciples and said, drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Dwell. 